All right, let's go ahead and talk about light and talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. And so um, in this particular um, presentation here, we're gonna learn about the characteristics of light and how we can uh, use light to uh, figure out the different energy that's involved in, um, let's say, an electron. And so, um, a new atomic model evolved as a result of the investigation into the absorption, absorption and emission of light by matter. And so, Niels Bohr is actually someone who um, used this concept of the absorption and emission of light of matter to determine that electrons live in specific energy levels. And so, what we're going to see is that different elements will actually emit and give off different uh, levels of, or different amounts of uh, energy in the form of light. Um, and that actually is dependent upon the way that their electrons are oriented within the atom. Now, visible light is a kind of electromagnetic radiation, uh, and it's a form of energy that exhibits both wave-like and particle-like behavior as it travels through space. And so this is kind of like that that dual uh, dual wave particle or that wave particle duality uh, that we're talking about, where electrons exist like particles, but they also exist like waves, and so light happens to also exist as a particle in a wave. So it has characteristics of both, and so. Um, this is the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, if you take a look, visible light is a little bit to the right of the middle there. And you can see that on either side we have infrared and ultraviolet. Um, and what I really want to point out is that infrared light and ultraviolet light are the same type of thing. It's just that they have different energies. Uh, we also have radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays and uh, x-rays and so all of those things are part of the electromagnetic spectrum and they're the same type of thing. They're all photons but they just have different energies associated with them. We happen to be able to see a very very thin part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about that, but again, we see a very thin part, and that part that we see is this Roy G. Biv. It's the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And when we see this light, like when we see purple or when we see red, we're seeing photons of light hit our eyes, and those photons of light, the only difference between red and violet is the amount of energy associated with that. Now, visible light can behave like a wave, um, which is characterized by, uh, uh, it can behave like a wave which will have wavelength and which will have a wavelength and a frequency. And so, um, again, visible light will have a wavelength and a frequency. And so, let's talk about these two things wavelengths and frequency. And so, the first thing we're going to talk about is wavelength. And uh, the wavelength is the distance between the corresponding um, points on an, on adjacent waves. And so what that means is if you start with uh, one point on the wave and you go to the next point, that's going to be the wavelength. Another way to think about it is if you start on one point and you move until the wave starts to repeat itself, that's also the wavelength. And so let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, these are all wavelengths. Notice how the red uh, the, the red wave has a longer wavelength than the purple wave. And so you can see as it goes down, the wavelength is getting smaller. Again, wavelength, uh, you can determine the wavelength by starting on a point and then going to where it starts to repeat itself. All right, the next thing we're talking about is frequency. And frequency is defined as the number of waves that pass a point in a given second. And so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this right here. So what we're about to do is we're about to watch these waves pass that point, and we're gonna say that one second passes, and we're going to see how many waves pass that point in a given second. So here we go. Now notice how many waves um, passed that point for the red. Um, if you uh, take a look there, it's a little less than two full waves. Now, if you go all the way down to the purple there, you can see there's like seven waves that passed um, that second, I mean, that, that point in a given second. And so you can see that as the wavelength gets shorter, the frequency is actually going up. That is an inverse relationship. 
So they're indirectly related. As you increase the wavelength, you're going to decrease the frequency, and the opposite is true as well. As you decrease the wavelength, you're going to increase the frequency. That is an inverse relationship. Let's go ahead and watch that one more time here. There we go. So, we can actually use this equation here um, to calculate uh, frequency if we're given wavelength, and we can calculate wavelength if we're given frequency. And what this is is C equals lambda F, and lambda is the upside down Y. Um, notice how F uh, it represents frequency, but it's also V that represents frequency as well, so sometimes you'll see V in there. But anyways, C is the speed of light, which the speed of light is a constant. That means it doesn't change, and it's three times 10 to the eight. What I wanna, uh, what I wanna uh, just say a side note on is when it comes to sig figs, constants do not influence sig figs, so keep that in mind. But anyways, um, we can use this equation to always calculate uh, wavelength if we're given frequency and vice versa. Now, visible light can behave like particles as well. And we call those particles of light photons. So we just talked about how they behave like a wave, but we, they also behave like a particle. And so a photon is a particle of uh, electromagnetic radiation. Uh, it has zero mass, but it carries a specific amount of energy. And so it uh, carries a specific amount of energy. And so um, the photoelectric effect is evidence that light behaves like particles. Um, and so we know that a light will behave like a wave, but it also behaves like a particle. So it has that wave-particle duality. And Max Planck uh, suggested, and Albert Einstein elaborated on, the following formula when describing the relationship between frequency and energy. Um, and specifically the quantum energy of a photon. And so here is uh, the equation for, uh, for that. The energy of the photon will always equal Planck's constant times the frequency. Now Planck's constant, again, is a constant, and it doesn't uh, affect the sig figs, but it's 6.626 times 10 to the negative th uh, 34 joule second. And so this constant is something that's not changing. And if you have energy, you can use this equation to figure out the frequency. And if you have frequency, you can use it to figure out the energy. And so this equation is great for figuring out um, either energy or frequency if you're given one or the other. Now, a quantum is a specific amount of energy proportional in size to the frequency of the radiation um, it represents. And so, uh, when we talk about a quantum of energy, we're just talking about a specific amount of energy. Um, now, let's go ahead and, and think about this. If you were to take a rope and you were to go like this to make a wave, let's say that you wanted to make something like the red wave. Well, then let's say you wanted to make something like the purple wave. Which one's going to require more energy of you to make that wave? And the answer is the purple one will require more energy of you to make that wave. So you would have to put a lot of energy into that rope to make that wave. For the red one, you would have to put a little bit of energy into it. And so essentially what I'm trying to say is that... As the frequency increases, the energy increases as well. So the purple wave has a high frequency, so it has a high energy. So high frequency means high energy. But what about wavelength and energy? Well, a small wavelength means a large energy. And so a, a large wavelength means a small energy. And so what uh, you, the way we say that is that frequency and energy have a direct relationship. As you increase the frequency, you're going to increase the energy. Now, when it comes to wavelength and energy, that's an indirect relationship or an inverse relationship. Because as you increase the wavelength, you decrease the energy. All right. And so... Now, the thing that we want to uh, keep in mind is that whenever we're doing a calculation, that's the energy of a single photon. So that's the energy of one photon. 
what we're eventually going to do is we're going to get to uh, practice problems where it's not asking for the energy of one photon, but asking for the energy of a mole of photons. And so um, what we would need to do is figure out the energy of one photon, multiply it by Avogadro's number to figure out the energy of a mole of photons. The other thing too is that's going to give us, uh, that equation gives us the energy in joules, but we might be asked to put the energy in kilojoules. So we have to take the joules and convert it to kilojoules using the metric system. And so it's something that we need to keep in mind. And uh, again, that's the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, again, we have radio waves. And if you take a look at the wavelength, those are very large wavelengths. Uh, talking football field size. Um, so they have very low energy. If you take a look at gamma rays, they have very small wavelengths, so very high energy. In fact, if you take a look, gamma rays can have a wavelength that's smaller than an atom. And so it's extremely high energy and very damaging uh, to us if we are exposed to that. And, all right, so scientists uh, use this understanding of uh, light to also describe the properties of electrons and how they behave in the electron cloud. Again, I talked about how Niels Bohr actually used uh, these concepts to um, determine that electrons exist in specific orbitals. And so what we're gonna be able to do is we're actually gonna be able to um, look at different substances that uh, give off certain light and we can determine what substance that is based off of the light that is given off. And that's it. Um, so we talked about uh, wavelengths, uh, frequency, and energy um, of a photon. We talked about how the photon behaves like a wave in a particle. And uh, we talked about how we can calculate those uh, three different things. And so go ahead and watch the Guided Practice Problem videos where we do calculate those. And I hope you have a great day.